Hey, what's up YouTube? I'm back with another video, and in today's video, I'm gonna be working more on the P28 with the Honda S300. So if y'all didn't see my last video, I highly recommend y'all check it out. I installed a Honda S300 on this P28, but of course, I ran into a couple issues. Well, the only real main issue was this ECU was not turning on the fuel pump. So after hours of diagnosing and researching and all type of stuff, I finally came across jumping A7 to ground and that kicked the fuel pump on. By doing that, that also allowed the car to start and run and run functionally. But what I want to get accomplished in this video is I ordered a new chip to replace QM3 and that's supposed to have something to do with the fuel pump. So I'm hoping that it's bad. I also need to modify the bracket a little bit that way I can actually mount this ECU. Now this is a little plate that goes over the ECU. I ain't gonna lie, it's a little extra and it's heavy. So I'm gonna modify this a little bit, that way I can easily take it on and off and not have to deal with all these ridiculous nuts. I'm also gonna clean up some wiring in there. Got wiring all on the floor, I just wanna straighten that up, zip tight, make it clean. That way I can put the floor back over it and you'll never know that anything happened. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off with swapping out QM3 transistor with this new one I got. Alright, so I got the new transistor soldered on and I also resoldered A7. So let's see, do we have fuel pump? You should be able to hear it if it worked. Get the fuck out of here. That actually fixed it. Let me try to start it. Hold on. Alright, so I got the computer plugged in. I'm surprised the pump came on, honestly. As much shit as I tried. That's how you know I didn't have no confidence. But anyway, you can actually test it by going to uh, test outputs. And let's hear if it clicks on if I turn on the fuel pump. And it does. So let's go ahead and try to start this bad boy. Oh, wait, let me go ahead and upload this new tune because I did make some corrections to it. So let me just upload that real quick. All right, let's go ahead and crank it. <laughs> Boom, just like that. So that transistor was the issue. QM3, that was the issue. Alright, so it's a new date since I last recorded, and that's because I've been doing a lot of research and testing off camera to figure out a couple things I've been trying to figure out. For starters, I just realized that my IAB uh, butterfly system on the intake, it never worked. So I ended up testing the solenoid and I'm like 90% sure the solenoid is bad. I even tried the stock ECU and it still wasn't working. And that explains a lot because when I would drive this car, like the low to mid range always felt a little weak, but then at the top, it felt great. And I'm pretty sure that they've been open this entire time. So what I did was, since the solenoid isn't working, the research I've done, people have been just hooking it up to the intake manifold off the one of these vacuum lines so I have it hooked up right here and that keeps the place closed until like full throttle or like high in the RPM then they open it's not the best thing but it's better than nothing like I say this entire time they weren't working so now I at least got something and I know some people are gonna say well why not just get rid of it especially right now since the car isn't boosted I kind of wanted to like retain a little bit of like that low end because like I said this entire time the low end been feeling weak and that's where you like cruise in or just like just do normal driving in so I'm hoping when I drive the car, I will notice a difference, but until I drive it, I won't know. I gotta do two more things though. So as I can see, I painted the lid on my ECU cover and put the Honda out of sticker on. So that looks pretty fire, but this right here, this don't look fire. So I need to clean this up, get the ECU back mounted, and get the carpet laid down. That way it looks stock again. And the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna verify timing one more time just to make sure that's right. I mean, I feel like that's not a bad thing in the check. Now I have a whole video of me checking the timing on this car and adjusting it. I will link that in the top right corner. But TLDR, I'm gonna use this to check. I just bought it from Harbor Freight. It's a little different when you got an S300 or I'm pretty sure any Honda. Data. So what you'll wanna do is go ahead and open up S Manager and connect to your computer. Go ahead and go to online right here and then set timing by doing this this is the equivalent of jumping that jumper back there you do not need to jump that jumper anymore if you got 
Honda. You want to go ahead and get to this screen and then start the car, let it warm up. And then once the car is warmed up, you want to go ahead and take your timing light and connect it to your cylinder one. You want to get it as close to the boot as possible for the best reading. And then next, connect the timing light to ground and positive. Next, unbolt these two 12 mils. That way you can actually rotate the distributor. Next, set your timing light to zero since we're not trying to advance or retard the ignition. We just want to set it to 16 and match the computer. After that, go ahead and start the car up, let it warm, and you will be shooting the light right here in that inspection port right there now like i said if you want to learn more about this i made an entire video the link will be in the top right corner click that and watch that but i'm gonna go ahead and verify this real quick so i can move on all right so after looking under here and trying some different things i think i finally figured out a way to mount the ecu so like i said earlier the amount of locations for these two ecus are different so you're gonna have to figure out a way to mount that one so what i got going on right here is i have one boat right there that was like just a factory hole i got that hole not corner right up right there i was thinking about making some type of like cradle where it's like a little bracket right here that like holds the ecu it just needs to be held right here i don't think it's really gonna go nowhere so i could just make two little brackets i was gonna do two like right here made out of this i was either gonna weld it or like self tapper it to this metal bracket and that should hold the ecu now mind you this came off that goes on top of like the ecu i guess to prevent people from like stepping on it and messing it up a i don't really drive with passengers too often and b even when i do i don't think that's gonna be super necessary so i'm just gonna leave that off because that was definitely in a way and it was kind of like overkill when i was taking it off so i'm gonna leave it off i'm gonna just make those uh, two brackets right here and i really think that the ecu will be fine it won't move or anything so let me go ahead and get this out and get this on the workbench and go ahead and get this squared away So I decided to close this video off by actually driving the car. Um, I'm finished up with the ECU install. Everything looks good. Um, I just washed the car, so I had to take it out and just cruise it for a little bit. I ain't gonna lie, I drove the car last night, so I already know how it feel with the new ECU. And the biggest thing I noticed was like the low to mid range. And I'm pretty sure that's because of the IABs. Like it kind of feel more peppy on the low end. And I got into it a couple times. I ain't gonna lie, it's not a good idea without a wide band but I did it and like the car feels so much better. It kind of feels like a different car, like just on S manager that said like 34% throttle, like it feel way more peppy. So if your IABs ain't working and it's because of your solenoid and you don't want to fix it, I think routing it to the intake manifold might be the move. I seen people complaining, talking about that ain't the right thing to do, but if it ain't working at all, I feel like this is better than nothing. Like. Like it feel way more peppy. Also, it's real nice that I got the fuel pump kicking on with the ECU with the key now. Cause I ain't gotta do no hackery or no shit. I just start the car normally and that is so nice. But the next thing on the list is to get a wide band in the car because I'm running some tune I found on the internet. I did make a few corrections because for some reason when you rev it and then like it kind of felt like the car wanted to die. So I gave it a, a tad bit more fuel like all the way at the bottom at like 800, 900 RPM and that fixed that whole it wanted to die issue. So I definitely need a wide band so I could fully tune the car. But so far so good, knock on wood. But to wrap the video up, I feel like we should do a pool. Let's go ahead and do it. All right, that's good. <laughs> I'm so nervous about me blowing the car up, but I feel like it should be fine since the engine is NA and not turbo, but I really don't want to take the chance, but it pulled, it pulled pretty good. Like it feel a tad bit faster, but the biggest difference is it feel so much smoother. Like before I had that ECU and before I fixed the IABs, it was real sluggish down low. And then when VTEC hit, it just went. And it kind of felt like more than VTEC. Like it kind of felt like booster nitrous. And now that that mid range is fixed, it's so smooth when it takes off. And even like downshifting, 
like that down syndrome is smooth so it's definitely a lot of things to unlock with this ecu once i get that wide band it's a wrap um i'm probably gonna order it at the end of this week so be expecting that in the next video if y'all got any questions make sure to leave it in the comments below or if y'all just want to talk you know i'm always down to talk leave it in the comments below also make sure to like and subscribe look at this guy just sitting here make sure to like and subscribe and Peace out.